So let's start by taking a look at the uh, setup I have here in Flash. Now I'm using Flash CS5, but it's important to uh, bear in mind that all of the techniques we'll be using are fully backwards compatible uh, right the way back to uh, Macromedia Flash 8 at least. I've got the screencasting set up so that whenever I left click the mouse you should see the, uh, the red halo and whenever I right click the mouse you should see the, uh, the blue halo. Okay, now in terms of uh, the setup I have, obviously I've got a very compressed uh, flash setup just so that we can have um, the highest resolution possible uh, on the screen for the tutorial and that I'm not sort of uh, making it full screen unnecessarily. Now in terms of uh, the tabs, uh, you want to make sure you have obviously your toolbar present. I've got the properties tab open. I've got a line and I've also got the library, obviously the stage and also the timeline. So if you're uh, if you're getting ready with this tutorial and you're missing any of those uh, panels, just simply go to window and just make sure the right ones are ticked. So you want uh, the timeline, tools, properties, and library. Okay, so um, all I've done so far is just set up a, a basic page by going to uh, file new, clicking on uh, action script two, and I've simply specified the dimensions of the uh, flash movie that I would like to make. Mine's 300 pixels by uh, 280 pixels high. So obviously make this whichever size you like, depending on uh, how big you want your uh, flash uh, transition slideshow to be. These are again the same size as the photographs that I'm going to be importing uh, in a moment. Okay, so uh, let's get started. First thing we want to do then obviously is uh, bring in the photographs to the stage that we would like to use in the transition. Now I've got four prepared and I simply want to go to File, Import and Import to Library. So I've got them numbered one to four sat here on my desktop. So I've just selected all four of those and I'm going to push open. And hopefully you'll just notice that they've now appeared in our library tab. And I can click them to see a bit of a thumbnail as to how they're going to look. And now that these are imported to the Flash library, I can start to use them over in the stage and on our, on our timeline. So let's start by bringing the first image over onto the stage. And I can do this simply by clicking on the uh, desired image, dragging it and letting it go onto the stage. And I can use the uh, snap to grid to align this into place. Or again, you can use the align tab just there. So that's the first one dropped onto the stage. Now, the first thing we need to do is just decide how long we would like the first image to be present for before the second image fades in over the top. So I've just got the default uh, 24 frames per second set. So just for the sake of uh, the demonstration, I'm going to specify that I would like to have 60 frames before the second image takes over, before the second image starts to fade in. So I'm going to do a right click on the timeline on our first layer at 60, and I'm going to insert a keyframe. So now we've gone from having one keyframe to having 60 keyframes on our stage. And if we were to play the movie by pushing enter, it's simply just going to be uh, the same file for 60 frames. What I'm now going to do is just shuffle over slightly on the timeline. And I'm going to say that each transition between each photograph is going to be 20 frames long. So I'm going to have a look at 80, right click again, insert another keyframe. So now this portion here of layer one indicates to me how long the image is going to be present for and this second section that's separated by the uh, keyframes is going to signify to me when the second image will fade in. So that's all we need to do for the first image for the moment. Let's now make a new layer by clicking this new layer icon at the bottom here just on the timeline and we can obviously see our second picture ready just here. Now what we want to do is bring this over onto the stage by uh, clicking and dragging it and that's going to sit quite nicely on top. Again just using the snap to grid to drop that straight into place. <coughs> 
Now, instead of this one just overwriting the first one, we need to click on the uh, keyframe. I'm going to click and hold. I'm going to drag this over to frame 60. So this releases again layer one to be the first 60 frames. And then at 60, you'll see that the second image is coming into play. So again, let's just scroll over a little bit further on the timeline. What we now need to do is just to decide when the fade starts, which we have, and stops. So I'm going to right click at 80. I'm going to insert another keyframe. So this period of time just here is when the first image, sorry, is when the first image uh, is replaced by the second image. So after 80 uh, keyframes, sorry, after 80 frames, we need to add another 60 frames for the second image to stay visible. So all we have to do is just simply add 60 onto 80, which gives us 140. Again, make our way across the timeline to 140. Right click and insert another keyframe. Okay, so now if we were to play the movie from the start, just by clicking on uh, the first uh, frame, pushing enter, you'll see that we have our first image and then that swaps over to our second image. So let's bring in the uh, the fade. So we're going to have the uh, second image fade from 0% uh, opacity to 100%. So to do this, the first thing that we want to do is to add a tween. So let's right click in the central area here between the two keyframes and we're going to create a classic tween. If you're on a version of Flash before, uh, I think possibly CS3 backwards, then it might just be create tween. Classic tween was brought in, I think, in CS4. So we're going to create a tween. And you'll see the arrow indicating the tween just there. Now that the tween's in place, what we need to do is click on the keyframe at 60. Click on the, uh, on the picture. What you'll now find has become visible in the properties panel is color effect. Now, if you're not if you're not clicked on the image, you won't see color effect. You need to make sure that you're on the right area of the timeline, so it's 60, and you need to make sure that you've clicked on the image for color effect to become visible. From the style, select alpha, which is essentially uh, opacity. I'm going to bring that all the way down to zero. So now if we go back to our timeline, we should see, look, the second one fading in. So what's happening between these two keyframes is we've just set the opacity of the keyframe at zero here. However, it's still 100 when it gets to 80. So essentially it's going to fade in. Okay. And all we have to do to add the extra um, images is just repeat the process. So let's go along to the end of the uh, timeline so far. So we're going to need to add another 20 pixels by right-clicking. We're going to add a new layer. So we're bringing in the third image now. Insert keyframe. Bring in the third image. Snap to grid. Add the next keyframe to signify the start and the stop of the transition. And we're going to add another 60 frames for the visibility of the third image. So 160 plus 60 is 220. Insert keyframe. Back to this transition area. Right click. Create classic tween. Click on the first keyframe at 140. Make sure you click the image, over to the Properties tab, Color Effect, Alpha, and that should automatically be zero because that's what we set it at a moment ago. So there's our third image coming in. Let's just repeat the process one final time for our fourth image. So last image, snap to grid, inserting another keyframe, 
then another 60 frames just round us off there at 300 Gonna create a tween or a classic tween select the first keyframe click on the image over to color effect in the properties panel selecting alpha so the final thing that we need to do is just bring the movie back round to the start so that it will loop continuously now easiest way to do this is just to again add another 20 pixels onto the end and what we essentially want to do is just now fade this one out so let's create our final classic tween so on the last one we're going to fade this one out click on the image alpha now obviously this is going to transparent so all that we have to do is bear in mind that back on layer one we have our original image so let's just perhaps right at the end of the uh, timeline simply insert a frame so that that way the last image has got something to fade back out to now most importantly when the movie gets to the end of the timeline we've simply started back at the uh, the beginning of the uh, transition so that when the flash movie loops it will simply start again so the process is as simple as that like I said there's no uh, action script involved and uh, let's just test our movie and see the finished product so second image fades into the third image which fades into the fourth image that fades back to the start and that will quite happily simply rotate uh, round and round